Hi, and welcome to Build. I'm Rihanna Dillon, and as ever, we are live from London. Today, I'm joined by the cast of an amazing new Sky One series called Temple. Danny Mays, Lily Newmark, Toby King, Bakery, Chloe Peary, and Ryan McKen will be telling us all about the show, which explores a secretive surgical world beneath Temple Underground Station. Before we get them on, let's check out the trailer. Please welcome the cast of Temple. <laughs> hey, I was waiting for you. How's it going? Yeah, it's lovely to see you. Take a seat. Thank you so much for joining. Hey, you look fabulous. Hello, hello. I'm just going to wave at you guys at the back. How are you? Very well. Good. Yeah, good. Thank yeah. you so much for joining us. Um, remember, if you're watching live, then tweet your questions at Build Series LDN or leave a comment under the video if you're watching on Facebook. So, how are you guys feeling? You're kind of reunited. Presumably, you haven't seen each other for a while. Yeah, we haven't seen each other for a long time. What is it like? Oh, no, no, you, so, there was a screening uh, oh, last okay. week that I couldn't make, so you have... Uh, yeah, <laughs> I feel like I haven't seen them in, like, six months or something silly. How was it seeing it up on a screen for the first time? Crazy. Yeah, was <laughs> yeah. It insane? Mad, yeah, just, like, different from how I remember filming it in a weird way. Really? But, yeah, sick. Oh, interesting. So this is a Sky One original drama, so tell us what you can about the underground surgery that happens beneath Temple Tube Station. In a nutshell, that's what it is. It's an uh, illicit, illegal, underground operating theatre uh, underneath Temple Tube Station. It's uh, established by two characters, really, one of which is Mark Strong's character, Daniel, who's a high-flying, successful surgeon. Uh, and I'm a prepper. I'm into sort of chaos theory, and, I, and because of my job, I have access to all this disused underground space. And... Uh, events in Daniel's life take a turn for the worse uh, within his family. Lily plays his daughter, mm -hmm. and because of that, we established this this underground surgery. So um, it's a brilliant, thrilling love story, uh, apocalyptic prepping drama. It's <laughs> completely uh, impossible to categorise this show, and I, but that's 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 why it's ingenious. That's yeah. why I personally wanted to get involved in it. There are so many characters and cameos as well, and. Writer Mark Oro said that emphasising like the backstories to all these characters is such a key part of the show. So how important is it as actors to know about the backstories to a character? Um, I think it's important to understand where your character's coming from so you can play them uh, successfully, convincingly, to unlock, I guess, the human facets of a person, mm -hmm. light and dark, and um, bring that to light naturally in front of the screen. Um, me and Chloe to get into character went on a ride along. Did you? Oh we my did. God, I was gonna ask you. <laughs> yeah, we okay, spent. Okay, so you play police. Yeah, we so spent um, the day with um, some police in Southwark, and they drove us around in their car. Uh, we were actually separated, weren't we? Like we didn't, we didn't get to spend any time together. Um, so, but we genuinely were like driving along alleyways at like eighty miles an hour in pursuit of burglar. Yeah, among other things, burglaries. Yeah. Um, my, did you arrest anyone for real? Uh, they tried to, but okay. failed. Did yeah. you arrest? Well, no, we, no, some we were successful. Some, ki some kids who's, yeah. Yeah, we likes. were successful yeah. in uh, yeah. ascertaining <laughs> That was criminals. down to you, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was on it. I was in character straight away. <laughs> I found my character. Well, we did, both of us did. We found our characters on the day. Yeah, we did, yeah. <laughs> the, the people that were with us were kind of became, yeah, it became very clear what the, yeah, what was going to work in terms of telling story and, yeah. yeah. How did you work on your sort of backstory then with, because you're obviously kind of like the heart of the family and Mark's sort of storyline that's a bit more of a of the tearjerker side, I suppose. How did you work on that? Yeah, I mean, my character, I'm kind of kept in the blue about most of, oh, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> about uh, most of... Uh, there you are. Yeah, no, uh, about, yeah, basically everything mm -hmm. else that happens in the show, I have no idea what's going on. So um, in terms of preparation it was just about getting really close to my parents and then having them ripped away from me so I you know I formed like a really close bond with Mark and then all of a sudden he or well, his character becomes really aloof and it, mm. it was quite painful because I have a lot of love for Mark and it was really hard getting so close to him and then not having him in my life as much anymore, yeah. yeah. I imagine not having Mark Straw in your life would be really painful, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be devastated. Yeah. For everyone's lives. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so what attracted you individually then to the script? I mean, what made it really stand out for you? Um, I must say, on first approach of the script, I remember just being gobsmacked and, like, just really, like, 
I really loved it. Yeah. Like Mark Rowe had done something amazing with it. Cause like even the character, Jamie, that I play, he's sort of guy that like mm, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> he's like naive, but he has that sort of young, sort of charming sort of feel to him sort of yeah. and I remember just sort of reading him and thinking this guy I really relate to him and I really sound like him in a way and I remember I stutter and in the scene that I read for him he was stuttering and I remember I was like "Ooh, this guy is like me but we're different especially the choices he makes he's really like not me <laughs> I don't do that I'd hope not but there's an amazing ensemble of yeah. actors throughout the show and Lots of like well-established actors like Mark, myself, and Craig Parkinson. But um, these guys are sort of fresh on the scene in, in many respects. And, and Toby, you know, he, he got a place at drama school and he got a part in Temple. So he had to kind of decide what he wanted to do. But, yeah. I mean, it's always great when you work with fresh, new, young, brilliant actors. Yeah. And it just, you know, it feels, it feels alive and, and, and fresh. And they've just done such amazing work all of them it's uh, tremendous to work with and danny tell us about your character because he's a doomsday prepper like you you mentioned <laughs> yeah. it's a stupid question but why does he feel like the end is nice <laughs> um that's just his his heart and soul is in 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 that kind of world you know he passionately believes in if the world is going to come to an apocalyptic ending we're fast approaching no deal brexit maybe so <laughs> the whole need of being self-sufficient and stockpiling food and medicine is probably very prevalent at the moment but yeah. um you know he's ridiculed he's a sort of lonely insular character you know and he's ridiculed by his workmates and so this is his sanctuary really this is where he is he's his most happiest i guess and tell me about the underground bunker because that is it's i mean that you know that's where the hot everything is set it looks incredible down there it looks so eerie is it as eerie as it looks to film down there yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, short answer. <laughs> Literally, I remember first going in there and being like, this is not real. This is like, I remember just, it's crazy. Even touching it is like, feels real. Really? Yeah. And it's like. It was an incredible set build. We were, it was in a, a huge factory in Southall. I have to say, it's one of the best sets I've ever worked on. The, the level of detail was so intricate. It was very theatrical. It felt like a sort mm. of theatre set. And in a way, the bunker in itself is its own character. And we also got the opportunity to work at Aldwych Underground Station, yeah. mm. which is completely abandoned. There's like 49 abandoned tube stations mm. uh, in London, which no one yeah. really knows about. I mean, there is so much... Uh, so many tunnels and, and, and space under there. Mm -hmm. um, so again, it just adds a great element to the um, to the show. And when we got to shoot at Paddington and all over, it's, we're sort of looking at the, the city in a different way in many respects. Did yeah? Did you only if you sort of see London in a in a new light just through filming this? Just very dark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, what's amazing about Temple is it 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 shows the vibrancy of London and also the darkness at the same mm -hmm. time. And um, just to add on to Danny's point, what I love about this show is how it brings to life London's multiculturalism, because yeah. it represents really, it really highlights it as a part of the show as well. All different types of people, all creeds, mm -hmm. colors, races. And I just think it's a nice tip of the hat to where we're heading. Mm. Yeah. And Lily, your, your character Eve, I really, what I loved about her is that she kind of goes through the, this quite awful tragedy and then remains still quite positive and upbeat. So did, how did you work on that character with the writers? Was that all there or was that some of you? Yeah, I think it's always um, more interesting for an actor and for the audience if you don't have to spell out the fact that someone's going through a tragedy. Mm -hmm. If you put on a smile, mm -hmm. I think it seems more relatable in a way because especially um, if you care about uh, the people that have also gone through this tragedy, you don't want to bring them down if you're feeling down. And so it's just, yeah, it's, you know, if you don't laugh, you cry sort of situation, yeah. yeah. She cares so much about her dad, which comes through a lot um, in the series. And we've got a clip that demonstrates that relationship and then sort of shows how um, the character of Daniel is drawn into this underground world. So let's, mm. let's have a look. Oh. Um, <laughs> I've forgotten how much my character swears. <laughs> <laughs> um, we don't actually see you, but we do hear your groans in the back of yeah. the van in that clip. So um, Jamie is described as Britain's most wanted man. What mm. has he done to earn that infamy? Ooh. <laughs> um, yeah, Jamie is... It's funny you said that because in, like, in him as a person, he is not that guy. No, he is, not. like, the sweetest guy. 
probably like he wouldn't hurt a butterfly. If he stepped on an ant, he would probably end up in tears. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so what's he been involved in? So he's been involved in this vault rob rob robbery, and he's sort of like he's messed up. <laughs> I'm not gonna say how, but mm -hmm. he's messed up in a stupid way, just like nervous and him just being overwhelmed by it. And yeah, that's sort of what he's done. Um, and I love how all of you interact with Mark Strong because, like I said, I'm obsessed with him. He was one of my like, like first ever interviews, and he was so lovely. So, what is it like working with him day to day? Like, what does he bring to set? Uh, he's class. Got a, yeah, he's absolute class. class. And um, I mean, I've been a huge fan of his. Watched him throughout the years, and it's um, you know it's great when you get to work up close and personal with someone that you greatly admire like him. And he was he just you know it's always a great responsibility for any lead actor in a show because it al always starts at the top. Mm -hmm. And I think he just totally and utterly led by example, really. And I think it r forced all of us to bring our A game to the table. And wisdom as well. Yeah. Yes, a lot of wisdom. I remember asking him so many questions about his experiences and his like career choices, and he just yeah really really told me a lot, which was amazing. What did you learn? What was like the sort of one pearl that you would pass on? Um, just about being true to yourself and being true to your character. Mm -hmm. He really we went on like a little, I don't know, a little like class almost like he gave me a little schooling about really? yeah i asked him i told him please give me some knowledge and he was yeah telling me about just being true and when approaching characters really making it close to yourself but still having like so keeping authentic and stuff like that but yeah it really did help me really did and always be at the front of the lunch queue <laughs> <laughs> That's a great tip yeah. for everybody. <laughs> um, Craig Parkinson, who plays Keith, uh, said, I love Danny to bits, but my God, it was a lot of fun to torture him. So was <laughs> it as much fun for you? It's a great scene. Yeah, well, Craig and I are old flatmates, so we're, we're sort of best friends. So it was, um, yeah, there is a sort of very nasty torture scene halfway through the series. So, But it was great when you, you work with a friend like that because... Um, he could get his own back. No, no, you know, you had a lot of trust <laughs> with one another. And um, again, Craig's an exceptional actor. He's a great person to have in the mm -hmm. cast. Um, Chloe and Ryan, tell me a bit about, because we see police represented so much in TV dramas. So how are the police represented in Temple? I think we steered away from any sense of being slick or like, this is not a smooth operation. Mm -hmm. But I think when we spent the day with the police, we were so aware of how that job is so tough and um the hostility they get met with all the time and also just the like annoying things you have to spend your time doing chasing up admin things that are get in the way of you getting to do your job as best as you would like um yeah. and you know the chat as well the, the sort of things that break up the day like get in a snickers bar or get <laughs> you know doing things that break up your day and how you when you work that much with one other person in a car like that we're just bringing that out as much as possible yeah. in that relationship yeah and um, it just the trust i guess yeah one thing that we saw when we were in the back of these the cars and stuff is that they talk about everyday life even though they're working in such intensity all the time and we wanted to bring that dynamic um that level of trust and that level of naturalism i mm. guess yeah there's that i really love that moment where you're just kind of you're sort of spying on danny's character but you're just you're talking about the mental load of women like you get in <laughs> this really brilliant like feminist um point which you never hear being talked about and then suddenly you had to like cut it off to go chase down <laughs> danny you've really seen a lot of episodes haven't I'm, you I'm uh, like, like, you've seen more than us <laughs> it's, I think it's like, job think of like the reality of having to be, do a surveillance job on something you are there for yeah hours. <laughs> and you know the things you end up talking about um and we know. we tried we didn't we ask each other what crisps we would have yeah characters yeah, yeah. which is hula hoops something i can't remember silly things <laughs> like really that like, yeah really went in backstory is important yeah. you know uh, i think mine was what did you guys have <laughs> Uh, Anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, Toby, that scene where you're on the operating table was so gruesome. I was literally screaming at the TV, like, no, I don't want to see it. No, no. So what was you... I mean, Mark Strong literally has his hand inside your stomach at one yeah. point. What was you to sort of repli replicate all of that horrible mess? Um, I don't want to spoil the magic trick. I don't know. <laughs> but it was a sort of magic table. <laughs> so <laughs> I was, was down like that. And oh, I was it was like, bizarre. Yeah, prosthetic <laughs> it was body. bizarre to look at. Yeah. yeah. 
I remember sort of being on there and trying not to laugh. My face was like, because <laughs> I'm hearing yeah. Danny going, blah, blah, and then like going through me, and it sounds really real as well. It was like, I mean, like, but that, yeah. that's also the other thing is that you know you're describing it to people and they say well it's a medical drama and you go no it's not that <laughs> you know it's a love story it's a medical drama it, it's a thriller it's it's as i said it's impossible to put in a box really is it rare to kind of work on such a multi genre stranded series as this as actors i think it is i mean it seems to be an industry which is dominated by you know genre, genre specific tv shows you know Yes, there's police in it, but it's not a cop procedural show. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it, it, as I said, it feels very refreshing. I don't know what you guys think about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I feel like the script was so, made me laugh so much, but I would never call this a comedy. Like, you know, and that's a quite a rare thing where something is, does lots of things really well, mm -hmm. but doesn't define itself by one. And it felt like it was trying to make me laugh, you know, yeah. or make me cry, but it does that as well, you know. Yes, it's, it's, it's it does. Good. Was that your... Well, I remember us having that conversation about the comedy in it, because yeah. it's written by Marco Rowe, who comes from an Irish playwriting background, mm -hmm. and he has a natural, it's coated with a dark humor which runs through it. So I can remember specifically talking to Mark about that and how much you push that, how much, and in, in essence, really with this sort of material, you just have to play it straight. It's the scenarios and the predicaments that the characters find themselves in, which are funny, really, yeah. and moving and tragic and all those things. What do you want the audience to take away from the series, um, particularly with that sense of moral ambiguity how far will you go for love <laughs> <laughs> i thought you were going to break out into song then Toby. <laughs> uh yeah anyone else um i'd say perspective mm -hmm. what would you do given the circumstances and situation how would you react because it's really easy to judge daniel and lee um well that's played play by mark and obviously danny yeah. but you know, how far would you be willing to go and would you lose your morality in the mm -hmm. process? Mm -hmm. I love things that make you question yourself and your motives and I think this show does that. Um, out of all five of you, who would survive best in the underground bunker? Character or actually us? You, actually you. Mm. Uh, I don't one. think I'd last five minutes, <laughs> to be quite honest. I'd be scared of the spiders down there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm quite good at um, intermittent fasting, so I oh. feel like um, <laughs> okay, good. I survive on quite little. <laughs> you um, really but, wait, yeah. And I just, I would just imagine myself as Smeagol, but um, <laughs> like on the circle line or something. <laughs> um, and finally, why should people tune in to watch Temple? But yeah, I guess because it touches on every single genre. Mm -hmm. So it, it's yeah, you'll find something in every single character in every single episode. I think. I think what I want the audience to take away with it from it more than anything is that they'd love to have a second series. <laughs> I know that we all would love to do one. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the, the, the finale, the finale oh. for the. I don't know if you have you seen the last episode. I've seen four. Oh, there you go. Well, I, I thought you'd seen the whole thing. The finale is absolutely spectacular, and yeah. I mean, more than any show that I've ever been involved with, it really leaves you wanting more, which is all you can ask for. Yeah, really. It would be cruel to the audience if we didn't. There are <laughs> yeah, there's so <laughs> many possibilities. Yeah. Yeah. Get some hate mail <laughs> coming through. <laughs> yeah. um, well, unfortunately, that is all we have time for today. But now, I mean, you must be convinced. Tune in to Sky One on Friday, 13th of September at 9 p.m. to watch episode one of Temple. Tomorrow, we're going to be joined by the cast from the musical Falsettos. But for one last time, the cast of Temple, Daniel, Lily, Toby, Chloe and Ryan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, so you. Much. Thank you very much. Thank you.